This talk is about using the personalized package to individualize or personalize treatment decisions. Now, many interventions, treatments, or policies um, have heterogeneous effects across the population, wherein patients with different characteristics uh, you know, either benefit from the treatment or patients with different yet characteristics are either you know, maybe potentially harmed by the treatment or have no benefit. In these cases, we should leverage uh, treatment effect heterogeneity to try to match each patient with the right treatment or intervention. And so the personalized package is designed uh, to be a data-driven approach for understanding what factors uh, impact uh, the effect of a treatment and further, you know, what patients benefit from a treatment based off of those factors. Uh, there's a lot of challenges in, in doing so. Uh, often data are observational, so there's selection bias. Uh, if there are a lot of covariates, which might modify the impact of a treatment, you might run into issues of multiplicity. Uh, and further understanding heterogeneity of treatment effect involves estimating interactions of variables with a treatment. And so it's really important to uh, make best use of the data. Uh, furthermore, uh, in, in understanding or leveraging treatment effect heterogeneity, we're often going to go about this by estimating decision rules, which input patient characteristics and output a treatment decision. And in order to make sure that these treatment rules work, we need to validate them very carefully. So we want to carefully test whether or not the estimated subgroups really do have enhanced treatment effects. And the personalized package has a lot of built-in functionality for doing so. So here we're gonna let this treatment uh, indicator uh, take the value one for patients who are treated and negative one for patients who are not. Um, the treatment can have multiple levels, but we're going to keep it simple here. X is going to be a P length P vector of pretreatment variables, which contains all confounders and the potential treatment effect modifiers of interest. Um, the confounders and effect modifiers don't need to completely overlap, but just for simplicity, we'll assume they do. Uh, here we're going to have y as our observed, observed outcome, where we view larger values as being better. Now, in understanding who ben benefits from a treatment uh, when there's treatment effect heterogeneity, it's important to distinguish between prognostic and prescriptive variables. So prognostic variables are ones that only impact or that impact the outcome but may not interact with the treatment. It's not needed, uh, you know, if you want to identify the prognostic factors, it's not needed uh, to include the treatment in a model. Uh, they're inherently not of interest when we're, uh, our interest is in understanding heterogeneity of effect. So heterogeneity of effect is completely driven by so-called prescriptive variables or ones that interact with the treatment. Prescriptive variables may impact who or what kind of patients benefit from a treatment, so the ones that interact with it. So here we can see that X2 and X3 are prescriptive variables because they interact with the treatment. Um, X1 is prognostic, but not prescriptive because it does not interact. And X3 is prognostic uh, in addition to being prescriptive. So variables can take multiple roles. So we're really interested in identifying these prescriptive variables. Okay, so we're gonna generalize this a bit. Um, let's say we're interested in, in the conditional mean of the response. So the conditional mean of the response given the treatment and covariates can always be written um, as some function of x, phi of x, plus the treatment times some delta of x uh, divided by a constant. So this phi of x are main effects. Um, and so this would contain, this would, be, this would uh, kind of correspond to prognostic variables. And this delta of x under certain uh, causal assumptions can be interpreted as a conditional average treatment effect. So this delta of x is really what guides who benefits from the treatment. Uh, we'll see down here, this delta of x is actually equal to the conditional mean of people who are treated at a certain level of covariates minus the conditional mean of uh, people who are not treated given that same value. Our goal is to estimate or construct some sort of scoring function that indicates to us how much someone with a given level of covariates is expected to benefit from a treatment. Um, and 
it, in doing so, it's going to need to align somehow with this conditional average treatment effect. So this F is going to be designed to rank patients according to the magnitude of their conditional average treatment effects. If we want larger values of this F scoring function to indicate larger values of that conditional treatment effect, we also want positive values of F to indicate positive values of the conditional average treatment effect. So positive values for this conditional average treatment effect means that a treatment is beneficial on average for someone with values, covariate values X. And so we want F to be able to indicate to us whether or not someone has positive benefit or is harmed. Uh, and so if we have such an F, we would recommend the treatment for all patients with covariate values X such that this scoring function is positive. Okay, so the personalized package uh, is, is really aiming at estimating these scoring functions. Uh, so here's an example data set. The outcome here is a, a yes or a no outcome, um, in, it just indicating that someone's uh, income improved from one year to the next. The treatment is uh, participation in a job training program, uh, and there are several covariates available here. Um, I'm just going to show how to set up the data for the personalized package. So here I'm going to indicate the names of all covariates, which potentially uh, modify the treatment effect. Uh, and then I'll construct a design matrix. I'll pull out the outcome and the treatment assignment vector. Uh, and we'll go through this data set uh, later and we'll see how the personalized package can be used uh, uh, for that. So the personalized package implements uh, a general framework for treatment scoring um, under the approach or the framework of Chen, Tian, Tsai, and Yu. Uh, this framework is, is the one that uh, we choose to use in the personalized package because it is quite general um, and encompasses a very uh, large range of different methods for estimating individualized treatment rules or understanding heterogeneity of treatment effect uh, that exists in the literature. So this uh, framework uh, is loss function based um, and has two classes of estimators. One class is a weighting class, another class is an A learning class. Each of these classes um, can utilize a wide range of loss functions where different loss functions correspond to different methods that exist in the literature. Uh, a defining feature of this uh, framework is that it, it directly estimates this scoring function F which we talked about, uh, and it does so in a way that does not require us to estimate the main effects in the outcome regression model. And, and by avoiding having to model main effects, it can be a bit more robust uh, than simply modeling uh, an outcome regression. So the weighting uh, framework is the following. I'll talk in, in a little bit of detail about the weighting uh, uh, framework, and then I'll talk about the A-learning framework as well. Uh, it requires us to specify a propensity score. So the propensity score is just the probability of receiving the treatment given the covariates. Uh, and the weighting loss function is the following. So it's a function of the this scoring, this scoring function F. Um, and we sum up overall the values in our data and apply this loss function M. So the loss function here uh, can be any number of different loss functions. So you can use the squared error loss uh, the logistic loss uh, for binary outcomes. Uh, you can use a, a so-called outcome weighting logistic loss. Um, and each loss is going to correspond to a different estimator. Uh, and here in the <clears throat> denominator, what we're doing is we're just inverse weighting by the propensity score. The loss should generally align with the outcome type. So, um, so a continuous outcome uh, is nice to pair with a squared error loss. Uh, there are uh, loss functions that are motivated for count outcomes, binary outcomes, and time to event outcomes. Um, for all the loss choices that are available, um, uh, we have it listed out in our, our JSS paper that came out uh, quite recently. Um, um, so this the propensity score here controls for measured confounding. Um, so that's its role. So if you have a randomized controlled trial, you can just replace this with a, a constant um, a half. Uh, the optimizer of this of the population version of this loss function does have the property that larger values of the scoring function f indicate larger values of the 
uh, conditional average treatment effect, and it is also properly centered at zero. So positive values indicate a positive value for the conditional treatment effect. Um, so some losses actually do estimate that conditional average treatment effect. You can see that the this scoring function is often some monotone function of, of the conditional average treatment effect here. So in the case of the squared error loss, for example, two times the scoring function is just the conditional average treatment effect. The A-learning approach is very similar, uh, but instead of weighting, the treatment is centered by the propensity score. In the personalized package, we often parameterize the scoring function as being linear or having some other simple form. Um, and we often penalize the uh, parametric terms in that, uh, in that form uh, to help deal with high dimensionality. Uh, so now I'll go a bit into the basic usage of the personalized package. So step one is, is always in defining our propensity score model. Uh, so we need to define a function in R, which in, inputs our covariates in our treatment vector and outputs the estimated propensities. Uh, so in the case of a <clears throat> logistic model for the propensity score, that would look like the following. Uh, if you have a randomized controlled trial, you can just define a function that returns a constant half. Uh, the second step is then to actually estimate that scoring function. Uh, and we do so with the fit.subgroup function. So here our outcome is binary. So I'm going to use the logistic loss. I'm going to apply a lasso penalty here to help select effect modifiers. Uh, and I'm passing this fit.subgroup function or the propensity function that we defined on the previous page. We can look at the, out, the estimated uh, conditional average treatment effects with this treatment.effects function. And the summary function gives us a lot of output here. So in particular, it tells us what choices we made when we fit the scoring function. It tells us the functional form of uh, recommending patients treatments. So here um, we have a function that says patients are recommended the treatment if their scoring estimated scoring function is greater than this constant C, that constant C is just zero. Uh, at the bottom, if we use the lasso, it tells us what variables were selected by the lasso as being effect modifiers. In this case, we can see that those who were married benefited from this uh, benefit from the job training program, and those who are Hispanic uh, do not. All right, uh, we can get predictions of subgroup membership uh, with the predict function. So if we want to see, you know, for a, a new set of patients who is predicted to benefit from the treatment, we can just use this predict function and specify type equals treat dot subgroup and it'll tell us what patients have a positive scoring function, or we can just rescore, return the estimated scoring function for those patients as well. Um, so we can also, instead of just estimating, getting predictions of the treatment scoring function, we can um, obtain estimates of the conditional average treatment effect with this treat dot effects function. All right, so that's what we can do with our, our estimated or, or the fit.subgroup function and what we can, uh, we can obtain predictions with it. But what we uh, also need to do um, is to validate that the estimated scoring function actually results in improved outcomes. And so that is the validation piece uh, and that's step three. So we wanna know what would happen to patient outcomes if an estimated scoring function were actually used to assign patients treatments. This, this question is counterfactual, so it's impacted by confounding. Um, and we also use the data to estimate this uh, treatment scoring function. Um, so evaluating outcomes, you know, conditional on, on subgroups, it involves double dipping. Um, and so it can provide a severely overly optimistic assessment of the impact of this scoring function on outcomes, especially with high dimensional data. And so the a personalized package uh, addresses both of these problems. So let's think about what we mean by benefiting subgroups. So let's say we have some estimated scoring function. Uh, that scoring function will recommend patients uh, treatments. So it will recommend patients either to be treated or untreated. Um, and patients will either receive in reality the treatment or potentially not receive the treatment in reality. 
And so what we can look for is among patients who are recommended the treatment, that's patients in this column, what are the average outcomes among those who are actually treated versus those who were not treated? Um, and so if uh, the treatment has a very large effect among the subgroup of patients who were actually recommended the treatment, that would indicate to us that our, our scoring rule is actually effective. And conversely, you know, among people who are recommended the control, are their outcomes similar or is the control clearly better than treatment uh, in that subgroup? So inverse propensity score weighting uh, as a, an approach to estimating these average outcomes helps solve problem one. Uh, and if we had new data, um, that would help solve the double dipping problem or problem two. And so the personalized package uh, uh, does both of these things. So it does so by you know, inverse propensity score weighting these estimated uh, outcome averages. Um, and then it uses uh, data splitting methods uh, to mimic uh, the idea of having a, a new data set. So data are randomly split into training and testing uh, portions. Scoring functions are estimating on the training portions. And then outcomes are evaluated within these estimated subgroups by uh, treatment group uh, on the testing data. And so we can just simply, uh, the, the personalized package is set up to do this very easily. We just pass it our, um, the returned model object from fit.subgroup and pass that to this function called validate.subgroup. Here I specify the number of replications of 10, but you should ideally set this to be a very large number. So this would be the number of training and testing splits. Um, and then here we give the training fraction. So the fraction of the data that's used for training um, here is 80%, which means that 20% is of the data is used for testing. Um, it gives some output here. Uh, it, it gives us output corresponding to that table I showed on the previous page. So this table here is displayed here. So if patients who are recommended the treatment here, we can see are in this column. And so patients who actually receive the control have lower outcomes on average than patients who are recommended the treatment, which indicates among people who are recommended the treatment, this treatment seems to have improved outcomes. Conversely, among people who are recommended the control, um, the treatment ha uh, had a worse outcome. Uh, this is essentially that conditional effect. This is a, this first number here is a contrast of these. And then the second number is a contrast of these two. Overall, we can look at the estimated improvement of outcomes if the treatment were used to, or the uh, scoring function were used to assign treatments. And what this is telling us is that the outcome would be improved a little bit if we use this estimated F to assign people to this job training program. Uh, we can also plot uh, those same results. This is that two by two table, but in plot form. Um, I won't talk about, about too much about efficiency augmentation, uh, but the personalized package allows um, incorporation of main effect models to help improve efficiency uh, without impacting bias. Uh, but again, I won't talk about that. Uh, we can see it in the documentation of the package. Uh, this is just to kind of reiterate the workflow of the personalized package. Um, the first step is, is sort of pre-processing or the design stage where we're constructing our propensity score model, we're investigating our propensity score model, um, or if we want to use efficiency augmentation, we're uh, <clears throat> constructing this augmentation function. The second step is actually estimating our scoring function and using it to uh, estimate subgroups. Um, we can also, there are also some plotting functions available to look at those subgroups. Uh, and then the final step is invalidating our estimated scoring function and understanding whether or not there really are enhanced treatment effects within the estimated subgroups. Uh, there's quite extensive documentation at this uh, at the website for the package. Um, so there's several vignettes and, and uh, thorough documentation of every function in the package. Uh, and then there's a paper in the Journal of Statistical Software that came out recently, which goes into detail about the statistical methods uh, underlying the personalized package uh, and in addition to the implementation. Um, so yeah, so thank you for, for listening.